Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, you guys, you guys know what that song means. It's time for Takashi 6 9 Breakdown, okay? So right now we're on episode 8 of this Dragon Ball T Takashi 6 9 mini series. That's what it's turned to on this channel. And thank you guys for supporting this series. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. I've been able to break everything down. If you guys have not watched the other series, I created an entire playlist. So go to my channel, click on the playlist, and it'll play from one through seven. And today we're on chapter eight, okay? So what's going down today is this. The other day I read you guys the letter that Mel Murder wrote to the judge. In that letter, he was begging for leniency, okay? He wanted the judge to give him another chance. He but he did time in prison. You know, he was raised in like a single-parent household. He just went through a lot. And, you know, he just wrote all this stuff, and he was hoping that the judge would give him, you know, a lighter sentence. Well, as of last night, it came out that his sentence was handed down, and he received 135 months in federal prison, okay? Now, one thing I find funny about the whole Fed situation, they love to sentence people to months instead of just saying years. And I'm kind of slow, okay? I don't know what the hell 135 months is. I'm like, what the hell is that, 100 years or some shit? Now, I know it's not 100 years. I'm not that damn slow. But I did have to Google, okay? So basically, 135 months equates 11 years in prison, so this entire situation is crazy. So the letter obviously didn't help because he didn't get, you know, one to three years. They gave him 11 years. Shoddy definitely got the most. He got 15. The whole we don't bend, we don't fold, we tray way. Everyone bended, everyone folded, everybody cried, tattooed tears and wrote letters. And somehow they all got less time than Shoddy, okay? So the whole situation is really insane, but it just lets you know that there are real world consequences for your actions. And Mel Murder, like I said in the chapter seven video, he's had plenty of chances. You know, you got out. Most people, when they get out um, of prison and stuff like that, they're struggling. They don't have a whole lot of, you know, people they can depend on. And the fact that he was able to get into the music industry and travel the world with Jim Jones. There's no way in hell that he should have ran back to the streets and even got caught up with the likes of 6 9 So the whole situation is sad. And if you guys do not know, even his young daughter wrote a letter to the judge pleading for her father, pleading to get her father some leniency. So this is a snippet of what the daughter wrote. She says, since my dad has been away, I've been very depressed and down. I feel like I have no one in my corner to guide me or my little brother because he's going to grow up to be a man. But while in that process, he's going to need a man to show him the ins and outs of life. I don't want to have to explain or express to my baby brother that daddy is never coming home. So that was a snippet of the letter that she wrote to the judge. And the judge, you know, maybe he felt a little bit of sympathy for her. He could have easily gave Mel Murder 20 years and he only gave him 11. So maybe that kind of helped. But 11 years is still a long time, especially when you have small children. I mean, like I said, the whole situation is crazy. So literally all the black guys who were involved in this case are now doing double digits. Every last one of them. They still have to sentence Harv and the other guy that kidnapped Takashi 6 9 Now, they've been found guilty, but they have not been sentenced yet. And I'm sure they're going to get a, a lengthy sentence as well. So now, as far as 6 9 himself, now there's all types of documentaries. Like I said, supposedly he was getting a $10 million record deal. So now Showtime is teaming up with um, a writer from Rolling Stone named Stephen Witt. They're basically coming up with a docu-series concerning 6 9 So this is what's being reported. The way 6 9s career played out is damn near a feature-length film. Takashi 6 9s rise and fall in the rap game has been one of the most fascinating cases in modern-day hip-hop history. And now a docu-series inspired by an article by journalist Stephen Witts is heading to television. Deadline reports that Showtime Documentary Films ordered Supervillain, which will be a limited docuseries focusing on 6 9 Supervillain will be inspired by an article in Wit's piece, Takashi 6 9 The Rise and Fall of Hip-Hop Supervillain, published on Rolling Stone. The three-part series will focus on New York Deli Clark, Daniel Hernandez, who transformed into one of the biggest, most distinctive stars in hip-hop for a brief period of time. It will also include a detailed look into his breakout, Gummo, all the way up until his arrest. So that is what 
Showtime is trying to push. Um, there's also been um, reports that 50 Cent is also going to create a Takashi 6 9 movie as well, that he's buying the rights to that. So, do you know, do you just see how crazy this whole case is? That so many of these grown men, instead of being leaders, they were being sheeples, okay? They were falling behind this guy who I've said from the first chapter of this series, he is the living embodiment of Pan. Okay, so I hope you guys eventually Googled who Pan was because I'm not going to do an esoterical breakdown. But he is the living embodiment of Pan. He is the man of mischief and, and chaos and confusion. And that is what the Takashi 6 9 character embodied. Okay, Daniel Hernandez, though, just the regular person outside of the 6 9 persona, was just a regular guy who got caught up in a lot of shit. So all of these guys are doing time and he's being rewarded. Okay, with docuseries with um, possible movies, record deals, and he'll be out in about two months. Think, I believe they'll let him out, you know, for Christmas to see his daughter and stuff like that. Now, if you guys do not know, it's been announced as of yesterday, his baby's mother has been in the studio. Her name is Sarah Molina, and she's now dropping a damn record, okay? So she's getting into the rap game. So times have changed. Times have changed. Who you bitch, I'm a threat. My pussy rough up a trap. A lot of old heads are mad and saying, you know, this is crazy. The youth is embracing, you know, snitch culture. But it is what it is. It's not the 80s or 90s. You know, if this was the 90s, like during the time of the Sammy Gravano and all that shit, when he snitched on John Gotti, his whole family went into hiding, okay? They went into hiding for years. You would think that Sarah Molina would want to be low key just because, you know, people might come after her. But she doesn't care. She's out here pursuing a rap career. 6 9 will be coming out to, you know, docu-series and all types of shit. I mean, it's insane. So it just goes to show you how much times have changed. Even WAC 100 spoke about this. So y'all go ahead and check out these clips, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Hey, listen, I got to speak on this. Everybody talking about 6 9 is $10 million deal. First of all, that's some internet shit. Ain't nobody seen no paperwork. Second of all, hey, listen. Whatever these people want to do with their money, whatever they want to invest in, <clears throat> that's their business. That's their right. Third, stop blaming him. It's his fans. He got his fan base. His fan base make him popular. The popularity brings strings. The strings bring revenue. Any businessman would do business with this kid. Y'all keep, y'all keep uh, uh, crossing the streets with the building. And the building don't got to buy by the code of the streets. So all you niggas running around here crying and mad, man, go, go step your game up and go figure out something. Go find you a youngster to push or do something. Stop crying, man, about business and what business is. That's just what it is. It's 2019, man. It ain't 1989 no more. Wes. And then meanwhile, all these other people are doing double digits. And I'm not saying these other people are innocent or that I feel bad for any of them because they were all criminals. They were involved in a lot of nefarious shit. A lot of innocent people could have been hurt and they've been doing dirt long before 6 9 rolled up. So I'm not trying to make them look like victims. What I am saying, okay, especially to young black men, the justice system will not sympathize with you, okay? It doesn't matter if you come from a broken home and you were forced to gangbang and sell drugs. They're not going to look at you as a young black man as a sympathetic figure, okay? But they did to Daniel Hernandez. Because Daniel Hernandez, a.k.a. 6 9 was not innocent in all of this. He did just as much dirt. He was green lighting for people to get shot. He was green lighting for Casanova to be killed. He green lighted for um, Trippy Red to be killed. So he's no innocent than Shoddy or anybody else. But somehow he's walking away scot-free. So to the young boys, you know, watching this situation play out and watching my docuseries, regardless of what your race and ethnicity is, realize that the judicial system is not your friend and that you need to do the right thing. OK, at the end of the day, it's not worth it. It's not worth it to be away from your mom, your family, your kids, your father. None of that is worth it. And I'm sure if all these black dudes who got involved in this bullshit could do over again, they would. Because looking at, you know, more time than you done lived is scary. It's crazy. OK, and no matter how much rappers try to glorify bullshit and degenerate behavior, 
the facts of the matter is most of these rappers are not about that life. They're not the ones out in the streets putting in work. They're not the ones getting time. It's the people around them that's getting the time and, and going off to prison and everything else. So don't be so quick to idolize these rappers and emulate what they do because your regular schmegler ass will be looking at 10 to 20 years. That's just what it is. So this entire situation is crazy. You know, Mel Murder, his chapter is not over as far as this series. He's been sentenced to 11 years in prison. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. So let me know your thoughts on this eighth chapter concerning the sentencing of Mel Murder and him receiving 11 years in prison. And then how do you guys feel about Showtime once again perpetuating bullshit? Because there's so many people out here doing something positive with their lives, but instead of creating a docuseries around them, because again, positivity is boring in this backward society, but they're willing to give an entire docuseries to 6 9 they're willing to sit here and, you know, help perpetuate more degeneracy. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. All right. Deuces.